Hello once again everyone and welcome out to Maverick Trading. Today we're going to take a look at the bond market, how you trade bonds inside of the Interactive Brokers Trader Workstation platform. So first, I'm going to create a little tab here with the plus sign that says bonds. That can keep me organized. Second, I need to select a bond. So let's choose Delta Airlines. So I type in DAL, which is its symbol and I look down here at corporate fixed income and there's the bonds. Now if you don't see that on your screen you need to hit the little drop down arrow and find corporate fixed income. From there I say okay I want what do I want? Well let's just go with the Delta Airlines standard. Uh, let, we'll smart route it. Maturity. Now let me drag some of this out make it a little more visible. It, maturity date is when the bond comes to fruition, kind of closes out, when you get paid back your invested capital. Now, these are pre-existing, these are already sold bonds, and bonds trade in the market, so we can buy them from someone else. And you can see that there's different choices here, different maturities and so forth. Let's say that currently we're in 2022. Maybe we're looking for one in 2025. That's when we want, we want to put our money in a bond or something for three years and then get it out at that point in time. That particular bond was issued, notice 2020. Now, what was happening in 2020 in, in April time period? COVID. COVID shut down the economy. Uh, people were not flying and Delta and all these airlines scrambled to go and raise capital. That's what the bond market is. Give us your money and we'll pay you interest on that. And Delta and United and JetBlue, they all sold a lot of debt during this time period because they needed to make sure they didn't have money coming in, but they still had expenses. They needed to make sure that they would survive. Now, uh, they issued that on that date. So these must have been five-year bonds because we know that the maturity is 2025, five years later. And at the time, they were paying 7%. So you could have bought this bond at that issue and get and collected 7% from that point on. Not too bad if you felt confident that Delta was going to make it through and that they were going to be, a, you know, that's a pretty decent return for five years. Now remember, if the market calms down, you can even get out of your bond at an attractive early exit. So let's talk more about that. This is kind of the building process of, of choosing what you want. There we go. We'll add it to our quote screen here. And you can see Delta Airlines corporate 7% yield. Uh, the maturity date is May 1st, 2025. And that's got its symbol. And it kind of tells you some details here that what it's trading for. Now, bonds trade around 100. That's kind of par value. So when a bond is issued, it's issued. And again, supply and demand kind of dictates the interest. How much appetite is there? And the markets kind of come to an agreement. Okay, there's enough buyers for this bond if the company will pay 7%. Look, there weren't going to be enough buyers for this bond issuance if Delta was only offering 3%. Everyone would have said, forget that. We're not going to collect 3% with all the risks. So there's that's where buyers and sellers come to an agreement. And the market said, okay, at 7%, that's good. Now, why is it trading above fair value? Meaning, if you want to bail on this right now, you can get 106.23. This these bonds, this particular one, sometimes they sell in $1,000 values. Sometimes they sell in $2,000. This is the minimum size. You have to at least invest the minimum size. And this particular bond had a minimum size of $2,000. So every bond that was sold, an investor paid $2,000 for it. Uh, that $2,000 though, if I sell this bond, say that I bought it back in 2020, if I sell it today, I'm going to collect a lot more than 2000 It's trading above par value. Look, if I, let's just preview this order. It tells us we'd collect about 2100 and, you know, so, such and such. Now it's saying I don't own it. I can't sell it short or whatever. But that's the point is I would get 2120 some odd dollars. 
Now, the question is why? Why can I sell it for more value? Well, remember, bond prices and yields move in opposite directions. What has happened in the market since COVID hit? Well, let's compare this to a more recent bond in Delta Airlines. Same company, but let's go to an issue date that's more recent. Well, they haven't done it. Okay, let's go in the past then, back when things were, were more stable. Look at this. These were bonds, it, just a year prior, they were able to sell bonds that were only yielding somewhere closer to 3%. Now watch. If we look at those bonds, they're trading below 100. This one's trading above 100. What's the difference? Well, once again, if I sell this one, it's, again, it's a $2,000 size bond, but if I sell it, I'm going to collect less than $2,000. What's the difference? Well, here's the difference. This is a very important point. If you own this bond, you're only getting paid 2.9% per year. If you own this one, you're getting 7% per year. Which one would you rather own? They're both backed by Delta Airlines, so the credit quality is the same. Which one would you rather own? Well, everyone says, I'd rather get paid 7% than 2.9% per year. I agree, which is why this trades at a premium and this trades at a discount. This discount compared to that is basically the difference between those yields, right? The math of it says, well, if if I want out of this bond, I'm going to have to sell it for less than its full value because it's an unattractive yield to the market. I can keep holding until maturity and get my full 2000 bucks back. But if I want out early, I'm only going to get 1800 and whatever. I got to sell it at a discount because people just don't want the 2.9. They want this one. Why can I get out of this one early for more? Well, because it's yielding seven, which is better than the current market. You know, the current ones going on the market are probably close to five. They're probably right in about the middle of those two based on this trading at 106 and that at one at 94. We know that if Delta was to issue a bond today, they'd probably be yielding about 5% right in the middle. This 7% yielder, if I want out early, I can get more than 2,000. If I stay in, then I'll get my 2,000 back, so I won't get the premium once it hits maturity. I'll only be paid back 2,000, not the 2,100 whatever, but I'll keep collecting 7% until that maturity date. So the value of your bond is going to be a reflection of what's happening in the markets. If yields go down and I locked in at a high yield, my bond value is better than the ones that are currently selling in the markets and therefore it will trade above par value. Now, if yields go up, which has been happening recently, interest rates, yields, you've seen bond yields spiking higher. That's why bond prices are falling because there's that correlate inverse correlation, right? If the yields are going up, that means that everyone that's currently selling bonds has to pay out more yield than the ones that sold before that. Well, it's not as attractive. So uh, I want, you know, really, if you time the bond market perfectly, uh, you'd want to be a buyer of Delta when it was yielding 7% and then proceed to have Delta in good, strong financial shape and you've locked in a nice yield. If you bought them in 2019, when everything was going wonderfully well for Delta Airlines, then you locked in at 2.9, you locked in at a bad rate given how the market changed thereafter. So, you know, in a perfect world, we would lock in at a high rate and see rates go down thereafter. That would cause two things to happen. Number one, we'd be getting a better rate than everyone else. And number two, if we want to get out early, we can sell at a nice premium. As you look at different bonds, again, you can play around with this. It doesn't have to be just airlines. We could say, well, Bank of America you know, come down to its corporate bonds and there's all sorts of different things that we can look at. We could say, you know, maybe we want to do an industry comparison. Let's say, well, how does JetBlue compare to, to Delta Airlines? And we could kind of click here and look at some different bonds and so forth and say, okay, this one matures 
November 2027, okay, how does it trade comparatively and, you know, what would be the cost and so forth? And maybe it trades at a discount, maybe it trades at a premium, whatever, but you could do some comparative analysis that way. Remember that credit quality, so there's credit rating agencies that give a rating as to the quality of these issuance. Back here, it's almost like Delta would be more of a junk status, more of a high risk. Now, that's because of the world environment. They were bringing in no revenue in 2020 when they were issuing these bonds. They were selling them in a panic, you know, and kind of making sure that they were going to make it through. So high yield bonds, aka junk yield, yes, you'll collect more interest if the company pays it, but they're far more likely to default on that. If you buy something with a lower yield, it's supposed to be safer, right? It's supposed to be a company that's going to be able to pay, pay their bills. That's why they get away with paying less in interest. People trust them more. So it's very much like your credit score. When you think about taking out a mortgage, the better your credit score, the lower the rate you have to pay. It's the credit worthiness of that business. Now, let's say that we wanted to look up U.S. government debt or something like that. You could do U.S.-T, and that will take you to the United States Treasury, where you can look up bonds and notes and bills. Uh, the name there suggests what the time frame is. So longer term, like if it was a 20-year, it's called a bond. Uh, 10 year could be a note and then short term are called T-bills, right? So a three month would be a T-bill. From here, we can select the different types that we want. Let's say we want a bond that goes all the way out to 2050 or something. And you can see it only pays 2%. I mean, you know, compared to inflation, what a disaster. But you could buy these at a steep discount. Now, there's still not very much, you know, benefit to it unless for some reason, yields were to kind of collapse. If yields were to collapse, well, collecting your 2% and then you'd see a big increase in the value of the bond, you could buy it low and sell it high theoretically. But anyway, uh, government debt, if you're, you're interested in that, it's not super exciting, of course. There's not a whole lot of income uh, on that side of it, but good information and good to understand the differences you can look up things like you know the the slope of the yield curve and and look at different characteristics to kind of get a sense of where the market's at how fearful they are all of this helps your information your knowledge your know-how and so this is a little bit more about the bond market how it works inside of the interactive brokers trader workstation platform hope you've enjoyed it have a great rest of your day and we'll see you next time goodbye everyone